Welcome, everybody. We've got Niels got back with us once again. Uh, Niels is going to be sharing a user manual to me. Um, I have no idea what this is about, so I'm super excited to hear what, what Niels has for us. Take it away, Niels. Fantastic. Thank, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Great to see everybody. Uh, I'm Niels. I'm an Agile coach and positive psychology dork, and uh, some of you have seen me around before, so thanks for having me back. Uh, what I've got for you today is actually a little more of an activity than a game per se, but it's a, a great activity for teams. Uh, so we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, but I want to do a quick icebreaker just for fun. Um, and I was thinking about doing some improv things, but I actually ran across a different activity this week that uh, I thought was kind of fun. Uh, worst kind of cake and why. So um, I'm going to invite you all to uh, to share what you think is the worst cake. Uh, just share your name and, and worst cake, and then we'll go around real quick. Uh, also gives a chance for a couple of folks that might be straggling in here as I see uh, Klaus coming in right now as well. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, popcorn cake. Um, my mom liked to make this when I was a kid. It's think of like a Rice Krispie bar, except popcorn. And then there's like M&Ms mixed in. Uh, and so it was just sort of this big blocky thing. You still get the popcorn kernels stuck in or like the little shards of the shell stuck in your teeth. And anyway, I'm a little bit traumatized by it. So uh, that's my worst kind of cake. But I'm curious what uh, you all think. Uh, so I'm just going to pass to Lisa. And then once you've shared, if you could just pick uh, the next person to go. Sure. So my 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 worst kind of cake is a Costco vanilla sheet cake. And it is the worst because I absolutely love it and I cannot stop eating it. So I that I need to stay away from Costco's cakes. So. There's a lot of things at Costco that get me in trouble. Just yeah, not the least which yeah. cake. <laughs> yeah. All right, how about Ron W? Hey there, everybody. Um, let's see, this is my first official joining of this group. Excited to be here. Um, worst cake, fruit cake. Not a fan. And I've never tried this popcorn one, but I think that would be up there too if I ever had it. <laughs> yeah, I think we might be kindred spirits around. I'm not really a fan of fruit cake either. I'm not sure if that even counts as cake these days, but. Uh, I don't want to spark any wild controversy, so it's so early in the morning. Well, welcome, Ron. Glad, great to meet you. I'm glad you're here. Who would you like to pass to? Uh, how about Matt? Hey, all. I was reflecting on this because I love cake, but I absolutely hate like the flourless chocolate cake. Um, Axel's over in Chan Asin sells that, and um, it's really gross. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Fair enough. Appreciate it. Who are you sending to, Matt? Yeah, sorry. I'll popcorn it over to David. I'm the only David on this call, huh? Awesome. That's rare. Um, <clears throat> cool. I'd say for me, the and I apologize, I missed the first part of it because I was fixing webcam issues. Um, the worst cake that that is for me is probably just boxed funfetti cake my kids absolutely love it and i feel like there's a thousand better options out there but they want the cake with the rainbow sprinkles on the inside and a ton of sprinkles on top and it just honestly it just tastes like air to me so um i'd much rather prefer something a little little more flavorful couldn't agree more it feels a little like false advertising when we <laughs> all those colors and then who who hasn't had a chance to go yet i haven't yeah. deb i would say uh german chocolate cake although i like chocolate but i do not like coconut so if it's got the coconut frosting on it i will pass um and i will pass it to chris yeah this is a a, a tough one for me i like ron's fruit cake but i don't want to do a repeat there um my my seven-year-old for her birthday this year asked for an ice cream cake which like i had a D dq ice cream cake a lot growing up which was great um and her ice cream cake ended up being ice cream with sprinkles mixed together and then formed into a bunt pan and then cut into cake slices there and 
it actually turned out a lot better than I expected it to. Uh, but it was way too many sprinkles. Um, and even she got halfway through and was like, yeah, this isn't good. So I think I'm going to go with my uh, daughter's seven-year-old birthday ice cream cake creation. Marissa, what do you have? I mean, I love ice cream cake, but I, I feel like I'm an ice cream cake connoisseur because if it's not Dairy Queen, it's not it's not done right. <laughs> um, kitty litter cake. Have it, Have you guys ever seen the kitty litter cake? Yeah. I, I don't really know all of the components, but it's, I mean, people, they'll, they'll use a, a clean litter box, I would hope. And you don't, it's like you make the cake and then there's some kind of crumbly topping that gets put on top and then they melt Tootsie Rolls ever so lightly and kind of like, I don't know. And it's just... It's for it's for funsies and it's pranky, but whoop, no, thank you. <laughs> Best. Uh, uh, I'm with you there, Marissa. I think that was everyone. I think uh, we missed it. I think it was, uh, and I uh, appreciate you all sharing. Um, it, when I saw this happen earlier this week, there was sort of a a group that was in in vigorous disagreement with red velvet cake. I'm kind of uh, ambivalent, but there's a lot of people that were were really hating that. But um, anyway, I appreciate you all sharing because, the, of course, the whole idea of doing this is just uh, it's a little bit it's it's novel and it gives you a, a more of a view in, into um, each of our personalities and our perspectives. And that's that's the idea behind the activity that I want to share with you today. So before I actually show you the form, I put this I created a fillable PDF that I'll share with you when we get into the activity. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of the background and, and how I've come across it. So uh, I think this was first, the first time I heard about it was a few years ago. Um, while I follow uh, the Ready and Brave New Work for anybody that, that follows their podcast, they've got a lot of great stuff and they've, they've mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, and they reference Adam Bryant, who was writing for the New York Times. He had an interview uh, almost 10 years ago uh, in um, their little, his little column called The Corner Office. He was interviewing Ivar Krogerd, who was uh, the lead strategist at Questback. And so uh, they talked about this idea of a user manual to me. Uh, and the way that I've seen it in practice uh, is that this is a great tool for especially new teams or if somebody's new to the organization, it's a great chance to get past sort of the resume, sort of the, the maybe the corporate face that some of us put on. Of course, nobody here does anything like that. Um, but it's a chance to be more authentic and more real with each other and get a better sense of of our perspectives and where we come from, kind of like that icebreaker was all about, but also how we can work better together. So again, with if you've got a new team coming together, it's a great way to uh, to, to understand preferences and point of view, uh, or if somebody new is coming to the organization, uh, those are good, good chances as well. Uh, I would not recommend this as something um, for a leader to create a readme of sorts. This is not, this is definitely something that you wanna have an interactive activity to go through. You want to be able to talk with somebody and share this in real time. Um, I think it's a good idea for the team once they've done that to then have all of these in a spot where we can refer back to it. That's sort of secondary, um, but I do think it's important that this is actually shared. It's not just I emailed it to you. Okay. The, the responsibility is on you now to, to know who I am and, and what I like. Uh, that, to me, that misses the point and the value of the connection that is possible by going through this. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think a pro tip is if you happen to have the possibility to compare this with other personality inventories, that can be particularly powerful as well, uh, whether that be DISC or Insights or even MBTI or even Strengths Finders. Uh, really, any of those paired with this just gives us an additional layer. Um, I'm not particularly married to any of the inventories that are out there. I think they're all useful and have their own detriments in their own ways, but they're all useful in terms of starting the conversation. So pairing that with this user manual can also be particularly effective. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna share my screen. Do I have the capability to do that? I think you should. Sure looks like I do. So again, I just put together a quick uh, fillable PDF that I'll add to the chat here in a moment, um, but I'm keeping the questions pretty simple. Uh, and since this is fillable, you can put your name at the top, uh, user manual for you. And so the questions are pretty straightforward, but I'll, do, I'll give you a quick rundown. Obviously, the, the one fact, the one fun fact is a great way to introduce more novelty like we did with the icebreaker today um, so that it's a, it's a chance to, to have a more friendly, uh, friendly, did I just make a new word? I was trying to say friendly and fun at the same time. I don't know if that works. Anyway, a more friendly, fun tone that you can start off with. 
I really like questions about energy and things that drain us. Uh, and so this is a good chance to talk about things that we get excited about so we can tap into some of that intrinsic motivation. And of course, conversely, things that we don't get as excited about. I don't love details or bureaucracy or paperwork. So if I get uh, stuck with a lot of that kind of uh, activity, you're not gonna see me showing up my best self, um, but that's just me. Uh, preferred communication style. I think that's also pretty straightforward, but I think it's important to understand how we best communicate. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, when there's, as you know, practically thousands of ways to be connected, uh, it all just starts to feel like noise at some points. And so knowing what's most useful, whether that's hitting me up on Slack or Teams or text message, um, usually email is my least preferred communication, but that's just me. Anyway, whatever is most appropriate for you, it's a good chance to have some dialogue about if you need something quick, here's how to get me, or um, here's how I, I communicate most effectively. I also like to talk about the way that, again, from my own point of view, my own preference, uh, having spent a bunch of time in the military, I like to talk about the whole idea of bottom line up front. So if I've got a message with a lot of detail, I might craft it quick, but then go back and actually distill what is the bottom line? What is the least you need to know? We're all busy, and if I can just give you that quick bullet point of this is why this matters, or this is why you should pay attention, or this is the decision you need to make, it can help put the rest of it into context. So that's part of my style that I like to share. Um, how someone can earn a gold star with me? Uh, I don't care if that sounds cheesy, because I think it can actually be quite helpful. Um, put simply, it's the it's the easiest way to make somebody's day. Is how I like to think about that question. So if I know that. Chris particularly likes coffee. I'm just making this up. And, and I see that Diller's, uh, he's got a lot going on or maybe he's uh, it, it, he's underwater. I've never seen that with Diller. Diller's always incredibly organized and, uh, and just a machine in terms of executing. I might drop by with his favorite type of coffee or something like that. Uh, again, that's sort of an in-person context that we haven't been in the same spot, but there's other ways that we can use that to be able to reach out and connect if we know what, you know, what we really enjoy on a personal level. Uh, how I like to receive feedback. Of course, uh, I think that's one of these things that is just can't be understated in terms of its importance. I think uh, it, too often folks think they know how to give feedback or know what the right way is, and that can get us into some territory of some assumptions. And so if we're in a position where some tough conversations need to be had, knowing the best way for me to be most receptive to that is going to help us tremendously in terms of framing that conversation and getting started. I also really like, uh, you know, some of the novelty things, things people might misunderstand about me. I reference my military career. That's one that happens. People might know that about me, or they might know that I've got twin boys that have pajama day at school, but they want to stop by and say hi, even if if Papa's trying to, to talk to group. Um, this is Julian. He can't hear you because I got my AirPods in, but you want to wave at him, Julian? I'll say hi. <laughs> right. I have a brother. <laughs> yep, you do have a brother. Being one of a twin. All right, have a good day, buddy. Great. Okay, I'll come find you. Give me just a second. Video games are clearly more important than anything that I'm trying to do. So I appreciate your flexibility. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, man. Sorry for that. Appreciate your flexibility. Um, so we'll just round it out with uh, other things. And so it's good to have a kind of a quick catch all. Uh, and that's why I include that on the, the user manual. So if there's something that's not already captured, in these boxes, that's a great chance to, to, to put something else in there. There's other variations of, of that last question. And really, you can do whatever you want. This is just the starting point, And this is a way that I've seen it work well in the past. Uh, and so if you wanted to make your own set of questions, uh, you know, by all means, of course, uh, whatever works most for, for you in your context. Uh, so that's the, the user's manual in a snap, in just a quick overview. Again, having a conversation about this is most effective. So it's not it's not homework. It's not like we just fill this out, file it. Okay, I check the block. The value comes out of the conversation that we have about this. So what I'd like to do is first pause and see if you have any questions about what I've shared so far. Seems like that's pretty straightforward. Um, so fantastic. All right, the next thing I'll do is, can I upload this to the chat? You should be able to. 
looks like it's letting me. It's just taking me a second to make sure I'm in the right directory. So it's sent through cyberspace. What I'd like to do now is give you each a few moments to actually fill this out for yourself. Um, so take a moment and consider the questions, put in the prompts that fit best for you. And then depending on time, hopefully we'll have a chance to come back and do a share out. I don't think we're quite so big that we need to go into breakouts for that. We can maybe do that quickly as a large group, but let's just start by taking about five minutes to, to take a crack at answering the questions for yourself. I'm going to try to put a little music in the background if it's not too distracting. If it is, I'll turn it off.
once you're done, if you can just put done in the chat or use the thumbs up reaction or any other indicator. Looks like we're at least halfway there. Um, normally, I'd like to book a little more time to, to lean into this uh, because as, as teams start to share a little bit of personal stuff, uh, it can be a lot of fun and uh, it, the, the dialogue can, can really start to go. So let me give you a choice. Would you rather try to do a quick debrief as a group or should we go into two small breakouts to try sharing out what we've put together so far? We might have some time for more meaningful conversations in like two smaller groups. I don't know. That's just my my thoughts. That's where I was going to. I'm seeing some head nods, and I think that resonates for me too. So um, why don't we try that? But it uh, looks like Lisa's got to jump here at 8.30. Great to see you. Feel I didn't put any branding on that PDF, so feel free to repurpose and reuse however you want. But have a great rest of the month. Good to see you. Be well. All right. Well, um, Diller, do you think we could just uh, 
impromptu put together two small breakouts. Yeah. Uh, do you want them for a specific amount of time or do you just want to let me know when when uh, you, you want to close them? So if we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us, so it's about three and four, let's call it um, 10 minutes and then we'll come back and do a quick recap as a group. So not a ton of time. And again, I would recommend giving this a little more space to breathe if you're doing this with a team. Um, so it'll be, it might feel a little truncated. And so for that, I apologize, but I'm trying to give you a taste of the activity and, and how you might use it. But yeah, let's do uh, 10 minutes and then we'll come back and do a quick debrief and then head out for a day. Okay, the uh, um, the breakout room countdown will be for nine minutes and then there's a 60 second timer of uh, there for a total of 10. So uh, otherwise we're all set. So here we go.
the end always comes so abruptly. They hit the end of the breakouts. But uh, so thanks to my group uh, for your shares. Um, I didn't quite get through mine, but because I was doing a lot of talking beforehand, I, I think that that's probably okay. I'd love to hear from you all though. What was your, what was this experience like for you? What, what insights do you have? How might you see yourself putting this into action? And yes, I also want to know what Ron's background is too. I'm a little bit obsessed with that. I was trying to figure out what river that might be. Oh, any guesses? Does anyone know? What's the name of the place is in Italy that has the canals? I have no idea. This Venice. Could be Venice could be totally off. <laughs> if you've been there, you might know the bridge. It's Dublin. Cool. There re recently and on background awesome i love it uh, i would say one thing that i found really cool from this and and i i always am hesitant to dive in on on some things like this because i always like i've i've seen reactions be like oh my god why are we doing this um but every time i see someone like smile nod laugh or like lean forward when anyone's sharing it's a very subtle way to create a connection even without making it super explicitly you've made a connection and that's always incredibly cool um so yeah i love i love seeing that um having people on camera and this goes a really long way too for that for me great insights couldn't agree more and i i think that that's uh that, that would be a, a pretty good ground rule to set if you're going to have to do this in a virtual environment as many of us probably probably would um, if you've got the luxury of being a person you can of course get a lot more of those non-verbals, um, but uh, I, I love that. Thanks, Klaus, I appreciate it. What what jumped out for me was like how much this reminded me of the five for five activity, if anyone's done that. Um, it ends up looking, I had one uh, hand, handy, but it ends up looking like this. Um, and it's a lot of the same kind of kind of questions. Um, and I've, I've customized the five for five a couple of times with like different questions based on the audience. And it strikes me that you could do the same thing here. You could change some of these if it didn't feel like 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 these were the right things for the group you were doing it with like these might be great for um a group of coworkers that are working together all the time but like in a different environment you might want different information um and so you could customize this in a lot of different ways but it's a great way to get to know people um in a group setting a little more more deeply than you might otherwise in those brief couple of minutes yeah i would say so we we don't do this kind of stuff at my work but i've been trying to find some activities hence why i'm here to learn um, but i feel like i know more about david and deb and chris than some of my coworkers <laughs> that i've been working with for nine months because uh it's just i don't know we don't talk about some of these things so like i feel like david and i could work on a project and i'd be like okay i'm gonna give him quick feedback right away and uh he appreciates that and then i'm kind of like that too so then we both just We'll jive and we won't offend each other or be Minnesota passive aggressive on anything. <laughs> so I, I love that. I really appreciate you sharing that because I, I think the other piece that you're reminding me of is that this goes a long ways towards building psychological safety on a team. And, and too often I think the assumption is that we're at work, we're just there to do work. And it's it's too easy to ignore the human component. Um and but that is just so instrumental for a team to be able to do their best work. And so whatever small little ways that we can just introduce that chance to appreciate each other as human beings can really uh, pay dividends in the long run. Um, to your point, if you've been with this crew for nine months and in just a few moments this morning, you glean some valuable insight with folks that you just spent a few minutes with. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, and not that I'm trying to cast aspersions on, on big companies and why they do things the way they do, but I, I do think it's a blind spot uh, that just taking time to be real with each other uh, is tremendous. But I'll get off my soapbox. Well, uh, any other thoughts before we close for the day? All right. Well, um, I appreciate you all taking this for a test drive and spending the time with us this morning. Um, where you spend your time and energy matters. And so I, I don't take that lightly. I appreciate that you did choose to be here this morning. And I think I'm a better person. My day's starting off all the better for it. So, so thank you very much. Thank you.
Yeah. Thanks, Niels. This Thank is great. You. Thanks all. I think we're still looking for a, a topic for, for April. So if any of you have anything you want to share, feel free to reach out. Um, and we'd love to get you on the calendar. And if not for April, for any future month, uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, we'll see you all next month. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye.